Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a Q&A with my husband Steve. This video is sponsored by Paradigm of Perfection Coffee. You can purchase it on their website. It is very exciting. It launched recently and we can no longer go back to store brand coffee. It's a problem. It is very good. So we'll kind of start with the story of the coffee and then we'll jump right into the Q&A. These are questions that you guys have asked us over on Instagram. So if you haven't already given me a follow, um, it is Paradigm of Perfection. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So Jittery Joe's is who we partnered with to make this coffee. They're a local Athens-based coffee shop. When I first moved down to Georgia, um, Steve was helping me study, and this was before we were and started dating. We took a study break. We walked past a shop that was selling Jittery Joe's coffee, and he's like, you need to try this stuff. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and then your first exposure to Jittery Joe's... Do you want to that was my sister, actually. Uh, she worked with the University of Georgia's football team, um, and I had the opportunity to do so you know, two years later, and she had a list of three things that I had to try while I was down there. Um, uh, was it Mama's Boy? It was the breakfast in Athens. Um, Jittery Joe's Coffee was another one, and I, I, just, I don't remember the third one. <laughs> so they, yeah, it was splendid. I was studying for my boards. They actually had a, a drink called a Crackachino. I want to say it was f like a latte with four shots of espresso in it so when you're studying for your boards it is spectacular <laughs> so <laughs> i had that all the time and i passed my boards so Which i you know, gotta give them some credit i couldn't have done it myself but yeah so mm -hmm. that was kind of our first exposure to jittery joe's essentially what happened is one of you guys on instagram asked me how i drink my coffee and i said black because that's how i drink it and the roaster actually, Charlie from Jittery Joe's reached out and said, hey, can I send you some coffee for some feedback? So I was like, yes, please. Have had the coffee, it's amazing. So gave him detailed feedback, all of that stuff. And then he actually invited us to where they roast their coffee and we learned all about it. So like we saw the roasting machine, we heard about the process, learned about some of the farms. It was very interesting. Like. Did you know popcorn very well? Coffee pops. Coffee. I do need more coffee. The coffee as it's roasted, it pops. And that was the fun fact of the weekend that I learned. Um, I think the coolest thing was that it was, uh, the beans were like white and green. Oh yeah, Before yeah, yeah. you actually roast them. So that yeah. was pretty cool. Um, so long story short, we ended up trying different coffees. Um, we wanted to make ones where the trade was fair, um, supported farms. So there's one, it was a total of three farms that made up this bean or made up this blend and women owned things like that. Supporting the environment were very important things to us. And so we wanted to make sure we chose beans that had good causes behind them. And then I also wanted like a charitable component behind something that I did in my business. Um, Cause I always said I wanted to do that. So some of the proceeds go to the Kyle Peets Foundation, which we learned about from one of our old coworkers actually. Um, and she is a amazing triathlete and she volunteered with this foundation, essentially helping people with disabilities. Want, um, if they were like wanting to run a race or something like that, they would help do that and help fund it, um, provide equipment, things like that. So and amazing scholarships. and scholarships. Yeah. yeah. Amazing foundation. Um, amazing person who referred us to that foundation as well. Um, and amazing coffee that came about probably like a year long process from start to finish. So definitely mm -hmm. took time and, but definitely worth it. It's amazing. Go ahead and try it if you are interested. So this is the one we brought to our wedding, right? Yes. It was literally we did have what, we, like a week or two weeks before our wedding. Yeah. Was kind of like this is. It. <laughs> so we like brought it to the wedding and had oh. everyone taste it and things like that. So that was fun. The first night it works great. It was a disaster. The wedding. Day. Oh yeah, the wedding day. Um, I was like, we want some of that coffee. I'm like, I, I yeah. Can't so go I into took that room. I took <laughs> our kind of like 
where we were staying, um, and he was with your brother? No, with I your parents. I was with my parents that night. That night. Yeah. Um, and so essentially everyone was coming through getting coffee while I was getting ready, and I think what happened, like something happened with the coffee maker because we brought ours down, and I think they put the water in the wrong spot or something. So I open it up mm. and I'm wearing, thank goodness I had the robe on over top of my dress because it just like exploded all over. And my poor brother-in-law felt terrible. <laughs> but, and I was like, it's fine. It wasn't the dress. It's cool. <laughs> so I think in the pictures I had like the robe inside out. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was a good time. Good I think, stories. I think good later, memories. Like, a, like later that night, and his face was still like in shock. <laughs> yeah. A few hours later, he's just like, "I think I just ruined today." And then, oh, oh no, I no. didn't ruin today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not like at that time, yeah, but yeah. like that's what his you know thought yeah. process was earlier that day. Okay. So going to the questions that you guys asked us on Instagram. Um, so how did you guys meet? We, we met, I was actually her boss uh, before we started dating. Which sounds really um, bad. Yeah, it sounds great at first glance. Um, and then she uh, transferred to another clinic and then uh, during COVID we just kind of reconnected. And then how long did we know each other before we got married? So that was, we met in 2018 because that's when I started. Um, Pretty much four years. Four years, yeah. But we didn't start dating till two years into that, so yeah. yeah. So I'm going to ask you and then I will answer as well. But when did you know the other one was the one? I don't know. It never really crossed my mind, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I feel like it's just. I, for me, I'm, I'm definitely the type where if I ask you to be my girlfriend, it means I think I'm going to marry you. I just, I'm very serious and strict about that. I don't even remember when I asked you to be my girlfriend either, so. I know we were like just hanging out. I know we were just hanging out. Yeah, I, I don't know tell when, you when it was. It was. Um, yeah, that's when I knew it was an option. <laughs> um, I don't think there was any particular time. I think it was one moment just like stood out. I think he was just like saying bye to go to work, um, and that just like stood out. And I was like, this could be an option, um, but. I think it was just like over time, kind of was just lives melted together, felt comfortable, supported each other. Yeah, um, sure. I'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> Do you train together or separately? No, definitely not with you. You tried that. Mm -mm. We would work out same at the same times. time, but separately. Yeah. And then we just learned it was better that like to work out at different times. Yeah. And I think our schedules just changed over time too. To yeah. make that. But yeah. We definitely separate. We are in our own little world when we work out and don't want to be disturbed. Yep. What's the coffee rule? Who makes the coffee? Oh, I make the coffee every morning. Most mornings. I think I made the espresso this morning. Most mornings he definitely makes the coffee. I made the coffee at least once this week. Mm -hmm. He makes it the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. How tall are you? 6'3". And I'm 5'1". That'll come into play when, oh, here it is now. Okay. Do you have any deadlift advice for tall people? Um, or long people? I figured you'd be a good person to ask. Uh, better person to ask than you. Um, I think the big thing is really working on ankle mobility a lot. Probably, definitely smart to not have shoes on when you deadlift as well, just because each you know, half inch, etc. matters a lot. Yeah, the bare, the Vivos, I like the Vivo barefoot shoes. That was good. I've also worn like just barefoot, like the mid, like the toe Vibrams. shoes, Vibrams. I personally, I mean, especially gym wise, like, <laughs> do you really want to be barefoot? Um, probably not. <laughs> so yeah, I would just get a minimalist shoe. Um, be mindful of the uh, heel drop and uh, yeah, definitely really be very intentional with your, your uh, calf mobility and your ankle flexibility is probably the number one thing. Number two thing would be from a back standpoint, just to make sure that you have the pattern down good and to take all the tension up before you actually try to lift. So really trying to shoot your hips backwards and get the tension through your hamstrings before you actually try to lift because 
a lot of people they bend over and they have to bend so far. So that way, you know, they'll end up just as they go up, they'll, you know, get that tension as they're trying to move it and then their back rounds and it can kind of strain your back. So those would probably be the big, two biggest things. Favorite things to do together on the weekend? Uh, and walk and pool. Yeah, that's what I was going to say as well. Yeah. Be outside. Mm -hmm. Do we want to open our own clinic? No. He already has clinics. So he already opened up a few. A no. I don't want you there. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> and with that, um, someone did ask, do you see yourself living in another country? No. We're in the process of building a house. He owns clinics here. What would you do if you weren't a PT? I mean, do you want my serious answer or the fun one you used to say in college when you thought you were going to fail out? Let's do both. Well, that one was stripper. Okay. Ooh. I was just, no. <laughs> That's what we all would say, though. I think that was like a meme or something. I yeah. Think heard of. Um, uh, probably lawyer. Really? I would just be good at it. Yeah, you would be. If I had really thought of a good viable option, I probably would have dropped out of PT school and done it because the number of times I thought about dropping out was quite high. I would probably do some sort of like training or like something movement related, but. It's a lame answer. I don't know it's what lame. else I would do. That's why I'm doing what I do. It's just lame. I'm sorry. It's why I'm doing what I do too. <laughs> it doesn't mean that I use the same answer. Um, we did a game on like, mm -hmm. I think it was New Year's with my family one time. And we joked around about like giving other people careers. Um, and I think my dad said like pole dancer. Mm. Or like some sort of circus art. Cool. I think that was everything. Just, okay. That's impressive. I played rugby. That's true. Because we don't have a coffee table that we can put in front of us. Whoop. Actually, whoop. Good coffee job. fell. That is all the questions that you guys asked. If you think of any more, go ahead and drop them below. Anything that you want to learn from either me or Steve, go ahead and drop it below. If you like what you see and want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and we will see you in the next video.